you still need my cell phone? No, no, you can take it. You need anything else? I need something to eat, something to drink. No, it's good. Thank you. Of course, my friend. If you need anything, just let me know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <clears throat> okay, let's see. We'll wait for... Uh, let me actually plug my phone in so I can charge it and like see what's going on. One second, chat. Let me plug my shit in. Okay, there we go. Here we are. How are you guys? That was weird. I thought the live view would just turn off <laughs> all of a sudden. If you guys didn't tell me, then that would have been really fucking awkward, huh? Laura's outside. Um, I mean, to be expected, I suppose. How do you know that? <clears throat> what the fuck? Is there somebody streaming, streaming outside or something? All right, but my phone's charging, so I'll try to uh, I'll talk to Richie when uh, it comes on again. See if he's if he's gonna take a couple hours. You don't need to call him, but okay, let me turn this light off. Actually, no, that's the fuck that looks weird. <clears throat> there we go. So if Richie does actually take a few hours to come over here, what do we do in the meantime? What do y'all want to do? I wanted to just do bowling for like two hours, but. Unfortunately, that wasn't going to work. Uh, the lights are off, yes, because we uh, need to save our utility bill. No, I'm just kidding. We, motherfucker, we're just saving power, dude. Instead of leaving all the lights on. Why would we leave the lights on? I told everyone to start turning the fucking lights off, dude. Honestly. I guess we can go on Discord. I can try to... Uh, let's talk to some people. I know Friday is in the chat. We can, uh, what's up Friday? How you guys doing? I hear you guys want to, uh, I mean, we did hang out in Atlanta, so I know you guys do enjoy the streaming stuff. So <clears throat> no, the, the fucking electricity works. Y'all are retarded. We are just saving power, dude. No, we're not playing RuneScape right now, chat. <clears throat> so you don't have to worry about that one. All right. Um, let's see here. Go hang downstairs with the leeches. I mean, there's no, there's nobody here. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I didn't see anybody. You say Laura's here, but I don't think so. There is a new documentary, actually. We could, uh, Volus had actually told me it was a good one. We could watch that if you guys want to watch that. A new documentary about uh, my streaming. GTA, <laughs> GTA RP. Um, yeah, it's not going to work for me, chat, because all the... All the streamers are in the ser are in like a, a server that I'm not gonna get into, so that's like what's the point? It's just gonna be some server that everyone can get into, and it's no one's gonna role play, and everyone's gonna fucking just like fuck with me and shit and be annoying. So I don't think there's a, a real point unless I can have unless I have a whitelisted server to go and join. I don't think there's a point to do role play. 
Yeah, the introvert to extrovert documentary, actually. Foldis has suggested it, so. Where is it, though? Join Loki as someone with a voice changer. I mean, I could, could, but you guys would just spam their everyone's chat telling them who I am, and I wouldn't be able to get into a whitelisted server at that with that uh, with that. Anyways, so I don't think that would work. All right, so there's this documentary here we could watch. I actually haven't seen it. I think I've watched like. I've watched the first six minutes, and then that was it. Um, what the fuck's going on? Is the internet effing? Because it's not on my side. <clears throat> okay, it should be good. I mean, there was uh, it hasn't dropped on my side at all, so I don't know. All right, so let's check this shit out. I've, I've watched about four minutes of it, so let's see what we got here. And let's see how this guy is. Voldis had watched it. He said this was actually a really good documentary, so let's check it out and see how it is. <coughs> I thought it was 42 minutes. We'll see how it is, though. If it's really good, then sure. If it's really bad, then we'll just click off it. Paul? Bring Marie to come watch it. Um, I mean, I don't think she really cares that much, to be honest. Let's just watch it ourselves. Benino, better known by his online alias, Ice Poseidon, is a 24-year-old live streamer who, from humble beginnings as a somewhat introverted RuneScape streamer, has since then helped pioneer many aspects of IRL streaming and is regarded by his son. So I just have to say, for starters, this is a very rapid start to the whole thing. This is totally, like, he totally had no intro at all, no transition. He just started... Uh, which was interesting way to put it, I suppose. As a king of IRL, due to the strong and unique connection he has formed with his viewers. But all of this has come at a price. The price of selling his privacy for the content he produces. This, with the lack of moderation of his streams, makes him a target from viewers with malicious intent that have been rejected from other communities. Although these viewers make up only a small portion of his community, they are arguably the most impactful on his life. Through small aggressions, such as getting him kicked out of stores, to organizing a fake bomb threat that made national headlines and will later see him banned from his initial streaming platform. Wait, hold on. Have you, can you guys hear? Because it's, everything's up, the volume's up on my side. Let me see. You guys should be able to hear it pretty well. Oh, that's why. This and a few other things will only serve to distance him from his viewers and bring up several accusations of him lying or simply trying to deceive his community. Whether it's hiring actors to pose as police officers to over a five month period continually lying about a breakup with his girlfriend. This in no doubt would take a serious emotion. Actually that, he has a good point there. I'm very intimate with my viewers, but the more I get swatted and the more fucked up shit happens, the less intimate I get because that starts to turn into me having issues with wanting to be intimate with everyone. ...no toll on him and turn a large portion of his fan base against him, which will lead to a decline in viewership, which is where he is now. And as for finding out how this transition happened, what a better place to start than from the beginning. Raised in a gated community in... Although, to be fair, this has happened about four or five times. The cycle is, uh, is real. ...in Stort, Florida, Paul's upbringing, as described by him, was not a pleasant one. In an interview with his mother Enza Danino, she reveals that at a young age, that Paul was very shy and desperate to make friends, which he would later make, but in unexpected places, as when he was 12, a neighbor introduced him to the MMORPG, RuneScape, where he would consult a random name generator that would give him the name Ice Poseidon. It was around this time that he would find an interest in making RuneScape music videos, where he would overlay a popular song over footage of RuneScape. Through this, he would find another video maker and make his first true friend, Grayshawn, Wow, this guy actually did his fucking research. Also known as Waldesad. 
but their commonality wouldn't be limited to video making as they both play large roles in the RuneScape glitching community and due to his notoriety, he would also befriend the popular content creator Silent Core that may have influenced Ice to make more videos. Okay, that's not true at all. Motherfucker. <laughs> no, uh, Silent Car wasn't Silent Core when I fucking knew him, so no, he didn't influence me at all, but uh, the, my RuneScape video making days had nothing to do with what I do now, so. Ice would also make a couple hundred dollars by selling in-game items for gold and trading that gold for real life. That's true. I uh, I need to have like a, a, a stream deck here so I can pop it easier. Hold on. I used to glitch on RuneScape and dupe items and then sell the items for money. Life currency, which along with bug abuse, was against the game's rules, but he would never be caught. Back to the real life, Ice would play RuneScape sometimes 18 hours a day, and on occasion, he would get up before school, play, then immediately after he got back, he would hop back on and repeat the cycle. This would play further into his lack of social experience and may have caused many outbursts at his school where he would do such things to gain the attention of his peers and maybe make a friend. But due to his introverted nature, this would usually not work in his favor. It was also around this time that he would be diagnosed with Asperger's, which is a form of autism, and would take- I, think, I got diagnosed when I was like 11, dude. Calls ...would only make his life more miserable. As he continued to get into trouble and hop from school to school, he would also spend time in a camp for troubled teens. Fast forward to the age of 15, Ice was in high school and would enjoy doing prank calls with one of his RuneScape friends using Skype, and one of the calls targeted his high school. Where the previous calls were fairly in good nature, this one would have a consequential impact on his life, as during the prank call, his friend told the school secretary that there was a bomb in the school where in a panic, Ice would hang up the call and demean his friend for saying something that they both knew could get them in serious trouble, but both trusting the anonymity of the call had little to fear until 6 a.m. the following day, when his house was raided by police and his computer would be taken for evidence, where it was determined that he was not the one that made the bomb threat and was left off relatively easy. But this it's combined true. with his outburst at school, where at one point he publicly and loudly asked a member of staff if they were good at performing sexual acts of an oral nature. It was at this point where the school gave him an ultimatum. Either get kicked out of school, or join a theater summer camp hosted by the school to build character, which he then enrolled in. Although Ice would not make any long-lasting friends through this camp, he did find something he enjoyed, which was the stage. The attention he craved as a child was finally something that he was getting. He also quit taking his medication cold turkey and would start a job at Dunkin' Donuts, which he would leave after a short amount of time. Fast forward to- Well, I got- I got fired. That was a good photo. I got fired from Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, so that's for sure. But drama was fun and the police never, they gave me my, my, my old computer broken to pieces and the hard drive was fucked. To his high school graduation, he began studying for a bachelor's in finance and would attain a job as a cook at a seafood restaurant known as Chowderheads. But two years later, at the age of 20, his interest in school would slowly dissipate and he would stop attending school after he got his associate's degree. He would also be fired from his managerial position at Chowderheads after leaving an oven on overnight, but he would be quick to find work- No, that's not what happened, idiot! That is not what happened. Yes, I had color contacts, Chow was a fag. Um, that's not what happened. I didn't get fired because I left the oven on, dude. I fucking got fired for no reason, and then I was pissed and crying, so I left the oven on. Like- on accidents, like after the fact, because I was like, fuck, I just need to get out of here after I heard the news. Work as a line cook in an Italian restaurant and take an internship at an investment banking company, which was related to his degree field, all while continuing to play RuneScape and, to be more specific, smoking marijuana and closing doors on players at RuneScape house parties in order to impede their progress and generally troll them for his personal pleasure. He will later decide to record this, and on January 9, 2015, Closing Doors was uploaded to Ice Poseidon's YouTube channel where he will commentate over himself doing just that. Today what I'm gonna do is close the door on the guy who owns this house. As part of The foreshadowing though. As you can see in the friends list, it says Band and Dank KFC. Wow channel where he will as part of my uh closing the door in old school runescape series so right now i'm gonna add this guy travis uh kills skills i don't know uh 
so there's a green dot. I always play Ape Escape music, so it's my favorite game of all time. Two made to try and kick me, and I can run off, you know, when I see that green dot running towards me. So right now I'm just closing the door. <laughs> Evil trying to get in. Oh, no, oh, you. <laughs> and you. These videos would be uploaded to RuneScape's subreddit where they would get a fair amount of views and a moderate amount of upvotes. He would continue to upload various prank videos, but the one that stood out from the rest was Closing Doors 4. This video would make it to the front page of the subreddit and although a bit reluctant about the idea at first, with the encouragement of his fans, Ice announced that he would begin to stream RuneScape on Twitch, a popular streaming platform with a focus on gaming. This Friday, May 15th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 p.m. GMT. I will be streaming. I that was my first trailer right there, and that was that was some good shit, honestly. Ice's approach to this was more intuitive than most, as he knew to make it on such a competitive platform. And this was part of my second stream of all time. As you can see, I used to block my face because I figured that would be good marketing to, uh, you know, give the illusion of secrecy and make people wonder. He would have to stand out from the competition, so he would need a gimmick. Something the viewers could remember him by and leave a lasting impact. His gimmick would be where he would wear a suit and tie and only show his torso while streaming, leaving him somewhat anonymous. But he would later reveal the lower part of his face and eventually give up on the gimmick and would reveal his face to the stream and adapt a shirt and tie, which he had a large variety of, likely due to his internship. A little after this first month of streaming, he would earn his first hundred dollars, which would prompt him to quit his job as line cook and also quit his internship. Dude, I'm just like everyone else in LA, I make a hundred dollars, I'm gonna be a full time streamer. As he saw potential in streaming. This would help grow the stream as he could spend more time online, but this would also have an unintended consequence as it furthered his isolation. After the third month of streaming, Ice had accumulated over $4,000 in donations. A big part of his growth was due in part to his clickbait titles that would advertise him playing the Dead Man Mode beta in RuneScape when he was actually just in a normal PvP world. Although at the time he was not the only channel doing this, he was the one that retained viewers for the longest period of time. This would lead him to gain, at peak times, around 900 viewers, and when the long-anticipated Dead Man mode was released, almost overnight, his concurrent viewer base would jump from 900 to 4,000. He also adapted more gimmicks to build his character. Most notably is the tongue thing, where he would pucker his lips, leaving enough room to move his tongue from left to right in a rapid motion, and the arm thing, where he would flail his arm wildly. Most importantly, he would find a name for his community, being the Purple Army. The name comes from the purple dots on a player's minimap that are usually white, but if those players were in your clan chat, they would appear as purple. Though through his streaming career, these gimmicks for the most part would fade away, except for one that stood out from the rest. A simple two-letter phrase, CX, which when turned 90 degrees counterclockwise, makes a face. Fans would spam CX in other streamers' chats to notify each other when Ice was live or practically any reference relating to Ice Poseidon, which although might have annoyed other streamers, it gave Ice free publicity. This with a relatively unmoderated chat meant that Ice's streams was where you, as the viewer, could truly run rampant. In the politically exhausting environment that at the time was affected- Yes, and now that's very looked down upon to do. Imagine having an unmoderated chat in this day and age. It's just not found anymore. ...affecting a lot of people, Ice's chat gave much freedom and would support the stream's unpredictable nature. This and the addition of song requests was something truly unique to not only Ice's stream, but to his community, where viewers would pay money to donate songs that Ice would then play on stream. Many of these songs would be altered to troll Ice as users would include clips of racial slurs, racial stereotypes, or just a harmless reference to the stream. All right, who ice fan? You are now banned. See you later. You are. I'm sorry. You're banned, dude. You think that's funny? You're f***ing banned now, homie. So go f suck a dick. Why did you censor that shit? 2016, out? as the dead mind hype was dying down, ice would alternate doing different events on RuneScape. One of these activities was staking, which in essence is a gambling minigame that has the same odds of winning as a coin toss. Ice would take donations from viewers to fuel Band his activity, bud. and one yeah. day he was given the equivalent of $10,000 worth of RuneScape currency, which he would go on to lose. But through some kind of miracle, Ice was able to slowly earn it back, and I should mention, the intensity of this stream was unparalleled by any other and would catch the attention of many viewers outside of RuneScape. 
This dream would take him to the front page of Twitch and firmly establish him among the Twitch community. After this, he would begin to gravitate more towards variety streams where he would experiment playing different types of games, and the most popular by far out of any variety game that he played during this time period was V-Time, a virtual reality game where you can interact and speak to other virtual reality users, where normally Ice's interactions were limited to his chat and the occasional call from a streamer or viewer, his social interactions with strangers and his flamboyant personality were the focus of these streams, and the fact that the flamboyant personality am i flamboyant yet these streams were successful is a testament to ice's adaptability and started to show him that the people watching him weren't so much interested in runescape or the other games he played but instead him as a person as he was a strange you're wrong chat blank slate that most introverts could easily project themselves onto as this became more apparent to Ice, he would try to find ways to stream without needing to play a game, and with the release of the social eating category on June of 2016 gave him the perfect excuse to do so. With his experience as a line cook, Ice would stream himself preparing meals in his home and eating them in front of his viewers, and not even a month later, the popular mobile game Pokemon Go would be released which was essentially the birth of real life streaming. So one day after Pokemon Go was released, Ice took to the streets with his laptop, a headset, and various other devices that would allow him to stream in public, all while scarcely playing Pokemon Go. The highlights of these streams were the live interactions he would have with strangers all while retaining his unhinged personality. And whether it was Ice's enthusiasm, his cumbersome setup, or the fact that the people he was interacting with were on camera would usually mean that they would play into Ice's wacky skits. And while all seemed to be going great and Ice's viewership and wealth grew exponentially higher, behind the scenes in an uncharacteristically serious stream, Ice would reveal he has a deep sadness crushing him and the lack of meaningful communication with anyone, including his parents that he lives with but rarely talked to, meant that although he was doing well stream-wise, the pressure to make good content and the harassment he received when he felt that he failed would take an emotional toll on him. You know, there are just some things I just have to get off my chest. Like, I just, uh, you know, I don't really, I don't talk to anybody. Like, I don't even talk to my parents. Like, I don't, uh, like, I live with my parents, but we maybe talk like two words, maybe like two words a day, like two, maybe a sentence a day. Like, I really, we don't talk at all to argue and stuff. That's not talking though. That's not the kind of talking you want to do. You know, and you know, I don't really have anybody else. So you guys are like, if, any, if there's anybody in here watching, you're like the one who I'm, you know what I mean, talking to and letting this off my chest with. With you guys. So I did this because, uh, you know, obviously my other personal reasons that I had during that time and all times. Um, uh, I did a stream on VR that day, and it just didn't work out as planned, and I got a lot of shit for it. And that was like the first, that wasn't the first time I got shit for stuff, but that was like, it just really bothered me, so, you know what I mean? That's where, that's what triggered that. Being the only people that I actually talk to, when half of those people do nothing but to try to piss you off, you know, over the course of a few months, it starts to... It just kind of, it just starts to sink in. And I was reading in the chat, this guy, he was like, oh, he's got your money. You sub to him. He's just, it's just for the money. I mean, honestly, dude, it's really not for the money. Money doesn't make me happy. I mean, you know what I mean, dude? It's, you would think it would. I used to, you know, you would think money makes you happy, but it really doesn't. I mean, oh, you know, there's a number in my bank account I don't have to worry about you know, fucking shit anymore, but there's other things. <laughs> I can't even do this. <laughs> it's, it was some bad. I, just, I felt really bad I at those times. I just try to do the best that I can. And I do, man. The streams are good. Bro, if I if I even got half the harassment at that time that I do now, then oh my god, I feel like I would probably just not even think about hitting the live button. Good, I think for most of the time, but when I have one bad stream, like I feel such a like a fucking bitch right now, man. But I just I have other like I just man, I don't know. 
there's other issues as well. When you just don't talk to anybody for so long, it just gets to you. And I know I should like not fucking sleep for so long and I could go out and do shit. I just don't know how to fucking go out and meet people, man, without having like, like I don't, like usually you meet people at like a job or like school or something. But there's, I don't know how to, there's no, I, there's no way for me to do that. There's no job, no school. I just honestly, I just don't know what I'm sad about. Every day I just have this underlining sadness. I just don't understand why. As you can see, I've always had the same problems with being late and sleeping a lot and all this other stuff. Uh, thank you, Quants. Appreciate it, dude. Um, yeah. And, you know, a lot of people in the chat might say, oh, you know, old ice or like, why don't you have the same passion anymore? And I do have passion for streaming, but, you know, I still have a passion for streaming. But, you know, it's, 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 you know, not as crazy as it was back then. But, uh, you know, it's because I've had a lot of uh, things like this happen. Just this, but like 50 more times throughout the, the three years. <laughs> And, I've kept and you sometimes you got to just make yourself feel like, hey, if you fuck up, it's OK. And you just got to move on from it sometimes. So I'm, I don't think that's a passion thing, actually. I think that's just like a content thing. Like sometimes you fuck up, you just got to be content about it. One time my battery broke for my camera and I fucking cried. Like sometimes you just got to be more content about stuff. Otherwise, you're not going to make it everything in for the past 21 years uh, this is fucking hard man especially like when you talk to people it's easy to keep yourself it's easy to fucking keep everything in when you actually talk to people but not having it gone out and talking to people for like eight months now it's hard dude it's fucking hard this made things a lot more real in a sense Ice wasn't entirely a character and was more genuine than he would lead on. This would have many fans flock to Ice in support as his relatability with his struggles was widespread with many of his viewers. Though this would do little to sate those targeting him as less than three months later, Ice lost a bet on stream, Thank meaning that he would have to jump in his swimming pool. So he Skyped his phone through his computer to stream himself outside, and since he was away from his computer, he wouldn't be able to moderate nor hear donations. So viewers took advantage of this and played racist donations in order to try to get Ice banned. This would hit Ice's Twitch channel with a week-long ban, more than twice the length of his previous ban that was applied for the same reason. And a month later, on the exact same day IRL streaming was released on Twitch, Ice would ask for a girl's number and he would receive it but he forgot to mute a stream, so he had just leaked a girl's number to everyone watching. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I fucked up and I leaked a number. And uh, my next ban would be a month. Which is really annoying. He would then turn the stream off off to do a follow-up with this girl where it was revealed she received just three calls from viewers. And although she felt it was unnecessary, Ice would go on to pay her $500 as a form of compensation. Though this did little to dissuade Twitch as his new 45-day ban would still take effect for leaking a stranger's personal information. The lack of stream- To be honest, what I should have done uh, <clears throat> when I was at that moment was uh, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to say. I was just, I was given the, uh, the advice to just be a desktop streamer, you know, just stream from my desktop, play games and stuff. And that'd be the safest route. Kind of glad I didn't cause we got a lot of, uh, cool experiences, but at the same time, my life would be a lot easier if I was just playing games and the desktop streamer. Not that that's even my passion because I don't really want to play games every day. That sounds fucking awful. Um, but, you know, I'm just telling you, that's advice that I had gotten and I was like, nah, fuck that.
streaming would give Ice time to decide in what direction he wanted to take his life and would later announce instead of saving money to purchase a house, he would move to Los Angeles to produce more interesting content and move in with his childhood friend, Voldesad. This saw drastic changes in Ice's social life. Where in Florida, he would have the rare stream sniper and maybe partake in a Skype call with a viewer. But in California, within the first month of streaming, he would have established a manager, met several fans, some of which would become his close friends, and would get into contact with many other content creators. The most notable at the time being the former TV personality, Andy Milanakis, which he would stream with frequently. With this attention, he would also attract stalkers. A great example of this would be Andy, later given the name Mexican Andy by Ice's fanbase as not to get him confused with Andy Milanakis. This trend of naming unmemorable characters on stream by what stands out most about them followed by Andy would be something unique to Ice's stream and will later catch on and influence other streams. It was also around this time when Ice would begin to date a Twitch streamer being Haley Atisto. You know, apparently Haley was dating somebody when I started talking to her and then she broke up with him to be with me. Apparently, I don't know. And had many eventful interactions such as jokingly getting married and later attending DreamHack, a festival that emphasizes technology. But this would never happen, as on April 27, 2017, while waiting for his flight at the airport, he will leak his flight number. Uh, I'm, am I feeling better today? Or I'm feeling way worse, but I'm still streaming. Yo, great, thanks for the sub, do appreciate it. Uh, I, I don't know, dude. I might be on Terminal 5. I don't know what. I don't know where I am. I'm just on 53A. Is my that's my gate. And I'm not. That was really stupid of me. To be fair. I'm not sure telling you guys that is a good idea, but I. I what, what can you possibly do, right? Although he has. Done now that sounds really awful. Now that you. Now that we're at this moment in time, that sounds fucking retarded, terrible, and you know, just really pushing it. But you have to remember. When this happened, I've never been swatted in public before. I'd only gotten swatted one time in my apartment, and it was like really minor. So I was really naive, and that was like a huge mistake on my part. But obviously, you know, and obviously it just didn't age very well at all. But, you know, at that point, I was like, like, I didn't know what could happen. I mean, sure, swatting existed, but like, it's not really been a thing. Like, swatting somebody in public, like, it's not really a thing, you know, at this point, at this moment in time done this in the past and nothing has come of it, but this time, a viewer would call the airport and tell authorities that Ice had a bomb in his backpack. This would lead to police removing Ice from the flight and evacuating the plane in search of a bomb. This made national headlines and put Twitch, Ice's streaming platform, in a tough position, where they decided in order to avoid bad PR, they would have to cut ties with him and ban him permanently from Twitch. So now all Twitch streamers that he had befriended could no longer have him or his likeness appear on stream. This would be an understandably difficult time for Ice, but either through resilience or his spiteful nature, he quickly denounced Twitch and switched to YouTube as a streaming platform. Resilience. Not that much spite. Um, I didn't start getting a little bit of spite until after like a year. Uh, <clears throat> just because of I, just how I, was, how I thought I was being treated. But um, yeah, definitely resilience because otherwise I was going to go broke, so... I mean, we are the Purple Army, so there's no way we're just going to stop and disperse and become irrelevant in the world of the, uh, in, in the world. We are going to continue to grow and continue to maintain ourselves, and we are going to continue to expand our horizons. And after all this, we'll see where we are in six months. We'll see what's going on with YouTube in six months. And there is D3 an appeal at process. D3 gang and set at here I daily could appeal CX. to Twitch. And I could potentially get unbanned, uh, depending on what's going on in six months. Oh yeah, the interesting news that I was- I was really scared during this video, I'm not gonna lie to you. I, my YouTube had 20,000 subs on it. <laughs> I was really fucking scared. I was like, I don't know if this is gonna work, but let's give it a try. I was talking about, that I did uh, post on Twitter about. YouTube actually did invite me to a VIP section of VidCon, and we are going to talk about how to create YouTube Live and make it the direct competition to Twitch. So and that well in a said, few the months, boys no good. we are the people who revolutionized the civil war that is against Twitch, and we are bringing it down and creating YouTube Live. And to his surprise, he found that most of his community had migrated platforms to watch him. It should be noted that there was also a transition. I think that was a pretty good video to make. Um, 
because here's the thing. Most people that got banned on Twitch, they, you know, they go with it. They just, they just go with it until they can try to get unbanned or whatever. Um, but I, I couldn't really afford to do that. I had to just was like, I was like, all right, let's make a fucking move then. Let's do this. Let's fucking see what we can do if we rise against. Um, and that's what we did. ...in the content he was producing, where he was once primarily focused on streaming games and occasionally streamed IRL, now the roles were reversed, where the meat of his content was the IRL streams he did. Though through this process, he lost viewers, but also gained many that preferred his newer streams. It was also around this time that ICE would start making an average of $20,000 a month. He would also allow his subreddit to make major decisions in his life, one of which being who he would date. I want you guys to control my life. I mean... This is one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made in live streaming. Not gonna fucking lie. Subreddit, it's cool. Um, the community is awesome. But obviously some people just took that shit way too goddamn far. I do. I know that sounds really fucking weird, but I, the, the, the thing, this is what I have in, in like an idea for the live stream. I want... And yes, before people in the chat say... Blaming other people, by the way. Yes, this is my fault. I should have never said that. You guys to control every, like, every aspect of my life. And I know that seems really fucking weird. I'm not saying, like, no, don't do stupid fucking bullshit. Like, call, like, I'm going to keep, like, my location more secret and shit. But, I, like, that Reddit is pretty much going to be, like, my mother. That is what I'm saying. When you suggest things on that Reddit, uh, you are suggesting how I'm going to change and manipulate my own life. Yeah, I don't know why I said all this. I just must have been really, really scared. Um, I was really, really scared. You know, it was my first stream on YouTube. I was like, fuck, I don't know what the fuck we're going to do. But, you know, and that's what I defaulted to as my, because, uh, you know, for fear of losing the, you know, people around me and stuff. But that was a mistake. There was definitely another way I could win at that. Uh, Haley, dude, I like Haley, man. Like I don't know, man. I, I like her, dude. I've never, I never felt this way before to, towards a woman. And as Reddit pick Geisha, a mo okay, dude, Haley, no, I, dude, fuck Haley, dude. Model and former Miss World Dominican Republic, a reluctant IS would tell Haley about the situation. Where in a later stream, she would comment this. I helped him when he was suicidal. I talked to him every night. I let him cry and and he threw me underneath the bus because he wanted to reconcile with Geisha but he basically was like he he didn't even like Geisha he told me that he hated her and he wanted nothing to do with her that he wanted to be close with me off stream uh, but pretend to be close with Geisha on stream and you know like that that caused like some beef between us and then that's not entirely true um... The crying and all that stuff was true. Because, well, I mean, obviously, you know, I confided in, in this woman. I, you know, I confided in her, so. Um, but everything else is like, is, if I tried I tried having, like, two, I tried to do a thing with, like, two girls, like, you know, that's just, like, bullshit that I was doing. You know, I was just being like, oh, yeah, I don't really like Geisha. Oh, yeah, you know, Haley's just my friend. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, like, one of those classic moves. Thank you, Flame. Appreciate the uh, the member, dude. And then because I wasn't accepting of it, um, he took me up to the rooftop that night that Geisha came over for that date. And he asked me to be his girlfriend. And I told him that I just wanted to be bros. And I think, I think when you're a content creator and you're thrown up in front of people, you have. Although, although I didn't throw her under the bus. I was just like, Haley, I'm having a lot of issues right now with the whole Geisha thing. Uh, please leave. That's basically what I said. Let me see. You're a psychopath. Horseshoes. Uh, yes, thank you, dude. I, I, I have cheated on a lot of girls in my life. I am a piece of shit, I know. But I don't do that anymore. That's, uh, you know, the old me. This, this is a, you know, back when... I mean, dude, Haley was one of the first girls I got with as a streamer. Like, I didn't have sex with girls. Like, this was a new thing to me. So, you know, imagine throwing yourself from being, like, basically a virgin into, like, the situation where all these girls want to have sex with you for either the right or wrong reasons. So it doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, you're going to take those opportunities. You got people like Geisha and like, 
you know, Haley, like these fucking beautiful ass women that want to fuck. Like, dude, I'd never had that before. Like, I'm going to try and get as much as I can, to be honest. I have a lot of people that look up to you. Um, and, you know, I've said some things. That but at this point, I don't need to do that anymore. I've, you know, I've had sex with enough girls to understand that sex isn't really that great if you don't care about somebody. So. And I regret, you know what I mean? Uh, but pressure happened and I can't take it back. I can only learn from my mistakes. Which in another stream, Ice would admit his flaws and comment further on the situation. I lied to Geisha. Haley was sleeping over at my apartment and I f***ed up. I'm sorry. I'm a f***ing idiot. I always want to try and please whoever's in front of me so I go along with everything. In the process, I've lost a very important asset from my life. And that was Haley. I had to, I, 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 I just completely alienated her from life completely. She was there for me. Okay. Well, they're really fun. She was there for me when everyone else was gone. I was really sad and depressed. Am I, a path am I a pathological liar? Yeah. I am. Yeah, I shouldn't have done this. I should have just been like, I tried to fuck two girls. Fuck it, dude. Like, that's literally what my response should have been. Uh, but instead, I did this whole fucking spiel because I thought that I had to be morally right in the situation at all times. But I realize now, as a streamer, I don't need to be morally right at all times because I'm not a fucking priest. I'm a fucking streamer. I'm an entertainer. And entertainers don't need to be morally right all the time. Like, sure, it's nice, but you don't have to. And it's better not to just, it's better not to do this. Should I keep girls in my life to stream? I don't know. Makes me happy. But then I just get caught up in just other things. When I'm on the YouTube from Twitch, I told you all that I sacrificed my real life for this real life streaming life. Which means that everybody is in on my life. And there's no blurred line between the stream and myself. <clears throat> I mean, that's true. There's no blurred line. There is a little bit now, but there wasn't at, this, at the point in this video. And I was in a very confused state. Uh, because like I said, I had... I was very afraid of just losing everything I've worked hard for, so I just totally submiss was submissive to the viewers in every sort of way, and that was, like I said, a mistake because I should have had more confidence in myself instead of having viewers control every aspect of my life, which, you know, only led to a lot of stress. It's, it's, it's hard sometimes to uh, intertwine those things. Because usually when people deal with things like this, it's just between you and the girls. But now, it's, it's between me, the girls, and everybody. It puts me in my place, though. It really puts me in my place and helps me... Track and understand that, you know, what's wrong and what's right. So for that, I appreciate you. Fuck it. What is shown throughout this ordeal is his attempt to separate his stream life from his personal life, as even though it may provide him content, he regrets allowing his viewers to take so much control over his life and would follow further suggestions cautiously.
He would also have an eventual falling out with Geisha, but his dreams would flourish, as throughout the course of the next four months, he would go on to attend several conventions and collaborate with other well-known creators. He would also tour Europe and stream his adventures there. Ice was finally achieving the vision he had for his dreams, but in his personal life, he was still missing a companion, which on August of 2017 is when Caroline Burt would come along, and with her, she would bring a considerable amount of drama, as during the double date she had with Ice, she was still seeing her boyfriend, and after the double date ended, she would go back to her boyfriend's house and stay the night. But due to the date with Ice, this would cause conflict within their relationship, which would cause them to break up, and she would then drift closer to Ice. But the thing is, she kept all this a secret, which is where the drama comes in. Hi, I'm here, Jordan. <laughs> You're so good. After the date, after Paul and Caroline went on the date, she came home and crawled in bed with me because it was not real. And I broke up with her after that because I told her not to do it. You want me to? I'll turn it off if you're not streaming for real. It's up to you, man. You kind of you kind of made her look bad, so you should leave it on. Do you have some kind of proof to back this claim up? That I was living with her at the time? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're going to throw that out there. You can't throw that out there without proof. Yes. Okay, that was weird. I don't know why you had to put up with that shit. Okay, we're back to it. I don't know why it F for a second there. That was really odd, but we're back. We're back. So, all right, let's continue. Can we stop? Okay. Uh, dude, I don't care. That's why I didn't make a video exposing you like three weeks a video ago. video exposing me, dude? Come yeah. on. Like, why don't you look at Like, we haven't talked like, in three months. Although she brought this type of drama with her, I didn't believe that she was like, what a great frame to freeze on. Um, <laughs> I didn't believe her at that, or I did believe her at that time, but now that we're at this moment in time, I, I am an idiot. I totally should not have believed her. She could still do much for Ice, as she could potentially suppress the stress from constant swatting, harassment, evictions, and general and personal lifestyle he was living, as Ice has a somewhat open-door policy at his house, meaning that practically at any time, you could visit his house and chat with him, and he might even add you to the streaming network he's developing as long as he could use you to create content. So at any given point, there would be strangers in his house. I mean, that's, about, that's a bad way to put it, more so collaborate. Some even spending the night sleeping on his couches or just the floor. But again, this would be a massive sacrifice in privacy for a boost in his streaming career and would enclose what little he had left of his personal life even further. This and the disapproval that his fans had for Caroline would grow further when she became his girlfriend, which would distance him further from his community. But Ice was a happier person around this time. That can also be attributed to his visit with his parents on November of 2017 for Thanksgiving. He would cite this as an extremely happy experience. Uh, I, dude, seeing my parents is so long is really nice, dude. It's like, you don't understand how much you miss your parents until you hang out with them after you've been away for a while, you know what I mean? Like, the sh and, uh, it's, it's, it's fucking emotional, dude. It's like wholesome, like, you know, it's nice. I've cried way too much in my fucking streaming career, haven't I? Sorry, I'm not trying to get like all like teary eyed. For all these, all these rooftop streams, dude. I'm so glad I have a rooftop at this house too. One day it'll be used for content as well. I just, I don't know, man. I just feel like, just like really like emotional earlier talking about this because it's just like i don't know you just you get like i'm like happy dude it's what it is i just it's like hard to talk when you're happy because you know you just don't feel happy sometimes you know i just i haven't been happy for a long time so okay so i did this um so oh fuck fuck god fucking damn it you know i come uh, okay why well, i did this real quick so basically Growing up, I always had this, this thing where I wanted people to be proud of me because I never felt like people were proud of me, my parents, whatever. I just never felt 
like anyone was proud of anything I did. So when I went back to my hometown and I saw that my neighbors and fucking people at like the stores I used to go to school with and my parents, all these people were like, oh, wow, you're a fucking successful streamer. This is great. You're, that's awesome. I'm so proud of you. Like they were saying all this shit. So I was, I just felt really good because that these people from my childhood that I really wanted, you know, to feel proud of me, you know, they finally felt that. So that's why this occurred. Um, I hear these, these things, these like stories. And you know, it makes me happy, dude. Yeah, it's just, it's just been a while since I felt happy, so it's like, you know, I hear these like stories of, uh, you know, from these people that I grew up with. They're like proud. That's all I wanted, dude. It's, all, it's like all I ever wanted in life. Just people to be proud. But the relations he had with his community. Thank you, thank you, uh, Frank. I appreciate that, homie. Community would continue to struggle where before, their displeasure was usually targeted at Ice's inability to sustain a consistent streaming schedule and Officer the occasional lies he would tell. Now, still within the time frame of November 2017, there were accusations and somewhat strong evidence that Ice hired actors to pose as police officers to fake a police report that Caroline's car had been stolen, with the goal being to cancel his next couple of streams to spend time with Caroline. Again, these are only accusations, but regardless, the community Pretty sure I streamed every day after that, so definitely not. Community was not sated, and for most fans, the problem wasn't that he wanted to spend time with Caroline, it was how he tried to appease both sides with lies, as they would begin to feel strong deception from someone that they felt they could previously trust. Whether it was a contention between the two on how to manage a public relationship and streaming at the same time, or simply that he wanted to please his community, on January 4th of 2018, Ice would announce that he had broken up with Caroline. This would please a large portion of his community. Congratulations on breaking the brainwashing. We almost lost you. Okay, dude, thanks, bro. Advanced Kid, thank you for the sponsor, dog. And uh, I just love how things age. Caroline was actually in the back closet right there. She was in the back right there where that closet is. She was hiding, listening. As soon as that stream was over, she came out and gave me a big old kiss. Yeah, okay, check this out. I guess I'll, 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 just, bring, I'll just say this. I'll just bring it up, dude, because people are f***ing. Some people are just... I'm just kidding. No, she wasn't, but imagine, right? It's f***ing stupid, so... All right, check this out. <sighs> Why in the f*** would I... Fake breakup. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. I mean, think about it like this. If I get caught fake breaking up, do you not think that would be very detrimental to my career? I mean, it would. And do you think I would really take that fucking risk? But others would speculate if the breakup was another lie, which they were right to do so, as we will later find out, the breakup was indeed real but it only lasted three days, as in secret, Ice reached out to her and began dating her again, but this time in an open relationship. While to his fans, he would continue to support the narrative that he was single and would- It was an open relationship to me, but not exactly for, to her. ...was avoiding contact with her, but that- lie can only last so long, as almost exactly five months after the breakup, on day 11 on an RV trip that Ice had taken with his Andes and a few independent content creators, while at a resort in Horseshoe Bay, Texas, Caroline was accidentally shown on stream, which is where more drama ensued. Here it was revealed that Ice had had sexual relations with Caroline's friend, and though it was obvious to the viewers that the breakup was all a ruse, Ice persisted to belittle Caroline on stream in order to continue the act. This did not play to his favor. What are you doing? I just got the security. Hey, this place, so you have to come back. Is one of them here? Nope, none of them are I here. <laughs> this is not a good clip. This is this, <laughs> this is so bad. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this for let the clip play out. Um, I was in a really, really, I was really scared at this point in my time in my life. I was really scared. And I was really, like, intimidated by just everything that was going on. And uh, I thought the best response for me was to keep playing it off as, like, uh, you know, being a dick to Caroline. I should have, I, I regret that. I definitely should have been nicer to her. But, you know, I was really confused and, and intimidated, so. Security. 
They said the only person that's allowed to stay are the people that are on the names for the rooms. I just so talked that's, to them. So just me. It's only my name on the room. Yeah. How, how does that make sense? No. Let me talk to the management. Okay. You're, you're the one who caused all this. Don't sit here and cry. You're the one who caused everything. I'm not crying. You caused no, I came here because I of, saw what was going on. You were complaining to, to security because you're jealous of Kaylee. Oh my God. I just went and talked to security and I said, is there a way that we can get them to stay? They're performers. They're to be fair, when the Horseshoe Bay thing did happen and people did find out, before I started my stream, I did tell her, please do not come on stream. It is going to make it really awkward for me, and I would just really appreciate it if you didn't come on stream. And then she walks on stream. <laughs> so, I mean, to be fair, I tried setting up shit in a way that something like this wasn't going to happen. But when she walked on stream, it was it got really, really awkward really fast. For YouTubers, like it's a whole misunderstanding, and they said the we don't. Who caused this? How did I cause it? You're the one who's security because you're because you're like it is my fault for lying if of course but uh to make things not so awkward i was just like let me do my stream and we'll talk about this more when i'm done arguing with kaylee about security security came up to me and said that you came up with the cameras screaming about how you're Girl, different and security girls. came in the first place because you ran up right no, me and punched me in the came face up to me and said that he was saying i'm all these different girls, blah blah blah, and that he, that we hi, they hire a high end resort, and that was disrespectful of you, and they wanted to call me. I just agree. I'm like, yeah, sure, if you, if you, if you, yeah, who gives what does the resort care? What did I say? They said that it was disrespectful, and that you have high end cl clientele here, and that was very unprofessional. So okay, I just want, so it's to, professional to go out. And, I just tried it's to help you. I'm it's sorry. professional to go out and slap Kaylee when you're fucking jealous. Being out with you, dude, when we're fucking. <laughs> yeah, no. Sh Cause I'm freaking hot. What do you mean? If y'all are fighting all that stuff, then that's gonna be. Uh, I don't know why I said that. Okay, so I was trying to troll. All I wanted was just for that security Caroline, guard. Please just go. Please just go. That's all I wanted, cause he thinks I'm lying, and I, just I don't really care I just want about him. I just want you to leave. Look at what's going on. I just want you to leave. Yeah. Then we'll go to Austin. The only way to make her leave is to make her uncomfortable. Get her, get, just come here. Yeah. Get, just get in her face. I called him and I just said, get a she won't leave us alone, dude. I'm not. I have been gone. You, I literally sit in you my won't, room. You just won't yesterday, go I was in the dude. room all day yesterday alone. I was in the room all day yesterday. Today, I'm always alone. What do you mean I don't leave you bro, alone? I can't I'm watch always this, bro. alone. Nobody believes you. <laughs> I don't know what to do. The police said we, they can't take her out of the room. I don't know what to do. He was making me look crazy for the stream and it freaks me Make you heart. look crazy. You, you're actually a little bit crazy. <laughs> See you later, Caroline. Goodbye. Oh, no, please. It was also revealed that he had heavily damaged a rental car that was paid for by Caroline's mother, which he refused to pay the damages for. Okay, that's not true. We lost the car, but they found it, so. My mom says, yes, it's picked up, but Paul hasn't paid for it yet because the damage. What did they say the damage was? $3,000 of damage was done to it. Um, from... If you're wondering how we lost the car, I don't really remember exactly, but I think, like, so Horseshoe Bay was like located pretty far outside the city, like an hour outside the city in the middle of nowhere. And I'm pretty sure my phone died. I didn't know how to get to Horseshoe Bay. Um, so I ditched the car in a parking lot somewhere. And uh, and then some, like I somehow, I think I Ubered the Horseshoe Bay or something. And then I don't know. I don't really remember. Maybe my phone didn't die because that doesn't really make sense. But... I didn't know how to get there, so I fucking Ubered, and then I just ditched the car, and then we couldn't find it <laughs> where I ditched it, uh, so we lost it. But, you know, eventually, I think like a month later, the city of Austin found it, so. The wheels, and uh, since I guess everything he was doing. And... This, for many, was the lowest point in ISIS's streaming career. He would then fly back to Los Angeles, where by request of a subreddit, he would shave his head. 
but this would do little to calm the unrest in his community as more information about the relationship had began to leak. Which left many viewers wondering, if he can continue this life for a 5 month period, what else could he be lying about? And a stream he would do a few days later would give us more insight into why he lied. It just made it more complicated, you know, because she came on stream and she really broke my trust with that sh So I just was like, if you ever did this, I would just have to break up with you and get rid of you. And that's kind of what I had to do. But I mean, it's like, it was like a complicated situation because I really wish, you to be fair, with any of this, what I did totally does not excuse, it's not excuse whatsoever. I am a total, I was totally like not in the right there at all. Um, and I've since apologized to Caroline. Uh, to be fair though, when we did start dating under closed or behind closed curtains, I told her, please keep this a secret. And uh, after we broke up, actually after this, or it was like a, another time after this, I don't know, after like two months after this situation, um, I think I found out she, she had like Reddit alts and stuff. So I was like, I don't know. It was just really, like she definitely had some, some skeletons in her closet too. But does not excuse what I did. You know what I mean? I could have met her when I wasn't a streamer because it's like, um, you know what I mean? There's not that many people that care about me. So it's like, you know, when I have to get rid of people that care about me, it just kind of sucks. Like, you know, there's, ob there's obviously a reason why I lied. It's not easy. You can't just say to a community that hated somebody with a passion that you love somebody, okay? It's not that easy. Because then people will just obviously give you sh and... You know what I mean? It's like, um, it doesn't matter who you love. It doesn't matter who I love. You know what I mean? So, you know, there's obviously a reason why. I just wanted to keep something in my personal life. Five months later on a trip to Iceland, I try to re- This all relays back to what I said before and why I made a mistake. Um, when I said that, uh, you know, every, that my life will be controlled by Reddit and all this stuff, that was a mistake because obviously I felt the need to do stuff like lie about Caroline and all this other stuff when I should have just, you know, obviously been honest, but I just felt the need that I, I just felt like I had to because I rejoice. I'm just very intimidated by f viewers. That's basically what it boils down to. Uh, but I'm not going to sit here and talk to you about all that because that's irrelevant to the situation. And this is all like fucking, what, six months old, so who cares? This with Caroline once more, but with no success, as she had already found someone else. And later on, so would Ice, as a month later, he revealed his new girlfriend. But even still, the viewer's displeasure with Paul was still very noticeable. This was most evident on a subreddit where once it was full of memes and stream suggestions, Either due to neglect or genuine hatred had gotten so bad it had to be quarantined by Reddit staff as it had evolved into a community set on critiquing ICE and his companions, and on February 21st, 2019 would eventually be shut down by ICE. His YouTube videos would also be flooded with dislikes as many would cite the transition in style of content that he was producing, where to some it felt like he was trying to appeal to a more mainstream audience and had lost what had made him loved by so many. Where it stands, Ice Poseidon is losing subscribers daily, his community is regarded as one of the most toxic on the internet, and he is constantly surrounded by people that he doesn't know if they genuinely like him or if they want to use his fame for their own I'm gonna pause that. I know exactly who's around me that is trying to use me and who's not. <clears throat> I know it doesn't seem obvious that I know, but I know exactly who is and who isn't. I just don't make it known to that to those people well, I don't make it known to the fake ones. I only make it known to the real ones because the fake ones are around for a reason. Uh, you know what I mean? You gotta have more faith in why I keep someone around, even if I know they're fake. Personal advantage. 
many disgruntled fans would say his loss in popularity was due to his transition from a hyperactive introvert who cared very little about societal norms and was the forefront for counterculture has since become a somewhat unrelatable extroverted kingpin who has for the most part assimilated into generic streaming culture that somewhat cannot find a balance between his personal life and his streaming career. Though Ice has overcome many challenges, recovering the trust of his community might be the most difficult yet. I don't know if I'd call myself an extroverted kingpin, but, uh, you know, I'm still pretty intimate with, uh, with viewers. I, I think so. I mean, I like to have, <clears throat> you know, pretty, you know, like talks and stuff. Like fucking, I like to do shit like this. I don't know. Um, I don't think I'm some like extroverted kingpin who's like, all right, only talk to me if you donate or and shit like that. This is a section of the video where I give my opinion on what I think is going on with Ice Poseidon, right? And I should disclose that I've been watching him since 2015, which is when he started streaming. So I've been through his lies, I've been, I guess, part of his community, right? And something for me personally is I can't stand liars. I feel that if you think you can lie to me and I won't catch it, you think you're better than me and you think you, like, you can deceive me, so that's why I don't really watch him or, I guess, invest in him personally. I'll watch the stream if it's good. But as a person, right, and I know this is biased because I'm a content creator, I think what he's gone through would have changed anyone. And it was especially bad on him because he does what no sane person tries to do because they know the consequences. And that's exposing themselves fully to the stream. And if you do that, if you tell, like... <laughs> If you tell random people everything, right? It's harder to maintain personal relationships because how can so how can like your friends trust you if you just tell like you know like strangers everything, right? Like so, what that does is it kind of makes really what he's trying to do. It makes his chat, his viewers, his community like his true friends, right? His best friends. And what that does to a person, it kind of messes them up. Because imagine imagine your best friend being an extremely bipolar person that one day is like, hey man, great streams, you're doing great. Like, I really love where this is going. And like another day when like you're not doing so great, where you really need that, that boost, right? Imagine them just being like, going straight up to you and being like, kill yourself. Like, you suck. Like, you know, we shouldn't be streaming. And... Although it might not feel like it, like those do affect people. And ICE having no one really else to rely on, right? Because people don't really care what he feels is people don't care about his personal issues. It really messes them up, right? It really does. And I've talked to a lot of stream snipers and people that know him, like that have met him and know him like kind of personally. And off camera, it turns out like he's actually a really nice guy, which, you know, surprised me a little bit. So... Knowing that he is a gentle soul, and how I feel like all the swatting, the harassment, all this that he's been through, he just can't catch a break. So I do. Gentle soul. I really hope that he can recover from this. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's. Uh, I, I just want to say something because I, I don't think uh, a lot of people do understand. I don't think a lot of people do get it. And uh, I don't think I've ever said this before. But I thought it was obvious, but maybe not. Okay, are you guys ready to hear some groundbreaking news? Groundbreaking fucking knowledge that's gonna blow your fucking mind. That's gonna be censored out. Ice Poseidon and Paul Danino are two different people. And they used to not be because I got fucking lost in myself and I couldn't differentiate Ice Poseidon from Paul anymore. But now I can again. And if people are used to only seeing Ice Poseidon, it's really, it just, it looks weird. It does. But, you know, uh, yeah, that's, that's the breaking news. There's two different uh, people there. Two different things. Uh, I mean, that's, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. So, you know what I mean? Like the whole, if you saw some like really questionable stuff, like I just, I, I'm a really confused person. Sometimes, well, not really anymore. I'm I'm much more like in tune with myself now. I've done a lot of thinking <laughs> to myself uh, in the past few months. It's not multiple personality disorder. It's called having a persona, 
And uh, Ice Poseidon is a persona. Uh, Paul Danino is who I am as a person. And who am I right now? I don't really know. That's for you to decide. Who am I right now? You know who I want to be? I want to be... Uh, I guess I kind of want to be Paul Danino more than Ice Poseidon a lot of the times. Because when I'm Ice Poseidon, I can't really just chill. And it's really uh, exhausting. But when I'm Paul Danino, then we're all chill. It's nice and, you know, we're good. So that's basically uh, the two different things. One is a troll and one is a uh, troll. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's call Richie. Oh, George Allen. Yeah, I don't know who that is. George Allen. Who the fuck is that? All right, let me call. Uh, let me see if Richie's fucking come in or what. Let's see. Let me see. Your dog was having the channel bag of ice can Twitch. Have you had many super chat refunds this month? Be careful. Uh, I mean, not really. No. All right. Let's see what we got here. Let me see if I call him real quick. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's Greek in here? Uh, he already gave up on me. Maybe I should just ban him in the chat. <laughs> you gave up on me, Greek. What are you doing? Okay, for some reason the phone's not calling. Whatever you are, I support you. Oh, thank you, dude. I appreciate that. E-man. Yeah, I mean, I've done some fucked up shit in my days. Please leave your message. God damn it. Um, I've done... Hey, Richie didn't answer. Let me message him on Instagram. I've done some fucked up shit in my days, and that sucks, but, you know, we all grow as a person. I mean, dude, a lot of the shit I've been with has been really confusing. A lot of the shit that, like, I've done is, like, when you put yourself out there, it's fucking... It's, it's weird. It's really fucking weird. I don't know how else to put it. All right, let's see if Richie's going to respond. Okay. All right, if he doesn't respond, then uh, I don't know what to do about uh, Nate's hair then. I guess he just won't get his hair cut. Or my girlfriend cut his hair. He's on his way? Uh, well, I just DM'd him. So I want to see the ETA. Because <clears throat> Orange County's far as fuck. <laughs> so. I'm waiting for you to stop being a dumbass. Greg, you were a dumbass for six months last year. Uh, and you also came to my house for two months. And then after staying in my house for two months, it was moving day and you didn't help us move. In fact, you didn't even say bye. You just left to England. So that's kind of shitty. Keep in mind, I paid for most of the Postmates. So that's sort of like shitty, dude. But, you know, I forgive and forgot. And then all you do is go on your stream and just say stupid ass shit to pander to fucking Reddit. <laughs> that's literally all you do. Even after we did fucking shrooms in my house and had a great time. Like, are you my friend, Greek, or are you my coworker who's a streamer? Like, I don't really understand. But, you know, probably shouldn't be shit that I say on stream, but I guess I'm just being you right now. Okay. <clears throat> 
Well, Richie's not answering me still, so we'll just wait and see. Uh, let me read up on the donations that we got here because I actually have them off. Uh, Ice the one that does coke. Paul's the one who does wine. I mean, that could be a good way to put it. Let me see. Ban that f Greek incel. He is a biggest opportunist cock I've ever seen. You should have seen him sucking up to this ugly redhead thought the other day. Okay, thank you, dude. Uh, CX homie, I like Ice and Paul. Whatever happened or whatever you are, I support you. Whatever happened with the channel, bag of ice? I don't know. Please go see Caroline. Fuck, fuck. No, she's married, dude. What do you mean? It's your fault for lying. Of course. She see in the chat. Thank you. Can do a Reddit recap after this one. Thanks, buddy. Uh, we're revamping the Reddit. Yeah, the Reddit's going to be opened again. We're just revamping it. Uh, and it's going to be uh, added moderation to it. But I'll talk to you guys about that when we're ready. Let me see. Why did you kick Bjorn off the network? Uh... Bjorn was saying really questionable things again. That's all. Uh, let me see. Paul would be a great guest on the Patrick podcast. I don't know who that is, but thank you, dude. Uh, I believe Haley, you are a psychopath. Okay, thank you. If you are Greek, then sitting all day and playing games is fun, and only and the only thing you can do without having a heart attack. Okay, thank you. Don't come crying when you realize who SSJ really is. He's going to be the fall of CX. He's got you under mind, mind control. I mean, I don't think so. But like I said, you guys, you, you have to have more faith in me. I'm a pretty smart dude. That was a really good documentary. Putting your mistakes in the light only makes you look human and shows how much you really worked for and struggled for what you've created. Yeah, I definitely don't like looking at my mistakes, but, you know, they're there. And, you know, I recap them and... That was interesting. Damn, Greek, never give up on your friends, man. I mean, fuck it, dude. <laughs> Alrighty. <clears throat> All right, so this is what we're going to do. If Richie comes over and cuts Nate's hair, I'll do a sponsor stream with that. If he doesn't cut, if he doesn't come over and cut Nate's hair, I'll uh, just do a sponsor stream anyways. But playing RuneScape, so those that's what we're gonna do. Um, because I don't know he's, what's going on right now. Um, well, if Richie comes over and, and cuts hair, I won't do. I'll, I'll make it not a sponsor stream. I'll just make it a normal stream. But if he doesn't, then I'll just do a sponsor stream RuneScape. I think Ice is funny as it gets. Great character, fuck it, dude. But most of us old fags really love the real Paul BU and fuck imprint in the couch. Okay, thank you, dude. <laughs> okay. Um, all righty. Well, I'll see you guys in, I would say, in, I'd say like two hours probably. Like Orange County's far as fuck. So it's probably going to take him like two hours. Um, if. He is not here in, or I don't hear anything by two hours, then I'll just play fucking RuneScape, sponsor stream. And uh, yeah, for a little bit. So I'll see you guys in a little bit, actually, later. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Um, tomorrow, like I said, you're not going to believe me. I'm not, I'll, I'll just surprise you guys. I'll just surprise you. I was going to say I'm going to go live, but I'll just surprise you. Um, sponsor stream, two hours from now, 11 o'clock. I'll schedule it on my uh, channel here so you guys know exactly when it's going to go live so uh all right i'll see you guys in a bit all right i love you peace out and interesting documentary all right see you guys in a bit